Before we jump into the demo, let us review through this architectural diagram to understand what all do we need to create in order to achieve this. So as you see, we have uh, our AWS over here. And let me quickly get, grab my pen so that I can highlight a few things for you. Okay. So this is our AWS right here, as you see. This is AWS. In AWS, in a specific region, we are expected to create a VPC. So we are this is the CIDR block. As you see, the CIDR block of this VPC is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Okay. And after we have created this VPC, in this VPC, we are expected to create one subnet. So this is a subnet. And this subnet has the CIDR block of 10.0.0 the uh, zero slash 24, as you see, it's right here. This is the setup block. So after we have created the VPC and the subnet, the next thing, as you see over here, is that since this is a public uh, subnet, we need to ensure that we associate or attach an internet gateway. So it's right here. And after the internet gateway is attached, we need to ensure that we modify our route table to ensure that all non-local traffic, this is this is non-local traffic, as you see. So whenever you see the address 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0, that essentially means non-local traffic, okay? And this non-local traffic needs to be directed to our internet gateway. So that is what is the target over here, as you see, is IGW hyphen ID. So that essentially means the internet gateway. Once we have a basic setup, that is our VPC, our subnet, our internet gateway associated and a route table uh, with our non-local traffic being directed to the internet gateway, the next thing after that we need to do is we need to add an EC2 instance. So it's right here, as you see, this is the EC2 instance. After we have launched an EC2 instance, as you see, this is its private IP address 10.0.0.6. We need to associate an elastic IP address. This is an elastic IP address uh, to this EC2 instance. Okay, so now when you launch the EC2 instance, we, we can launch it with a public IP address as well. Um, but after we've launched it, we want to ensure that we associate an elastic IP address to it so that in, even if this EC2 instance uh, is stopped or reboots for whatever reason, the public IP address will not change. Okay, so these are some of the core steps that we have reviewed. Okay, so let me clear all the drawings. And for, for the ease of uh, anybody who wants to you know, follow this video later and wants to create their own VPC, what I have done is I have actually enlisted all the steps right here. So feel free to pause the video whenever uh, you would want to create uh, this particular scenario and follow these steps. So as you see, uh, I've enlisted all the steps over here, all the way until you associate Elastic IP. So that's there. Let me grab my spotlight. So this is where you associate Elastic IP to your Linux EC2 instance. So for this demo, what we will be doing is we will be launching a Linux EC2 instance. And I've added a few more steps over here, as you see, basically to SSH uh, uh, into your Linux EC2 instance using PuTTY. And then since this is a public uh, EC2 instance, since we've associated an elastic IP address, what we will do is we will ensure that we have internet connectivity and we will try and install HTTPD, then enable HTTPD and then finally start HTTPD service on this Linux instance. And once our HTTPD service has been started, we will uh, view the test page and the test page should come up 
using uh, EC2 instances DNS or its public IP address. In this case, its public IP address will be its Elastic ID. Before we go further ahead and jump into the demo, one thing I want, do want to highlight is please ensure that you release and delete all your resources, especially the Elastic IP. So it should not happen that you have terminated your, did your EC2 instance but your Elastic IP is still there because any Elastic IP that is not used or not associated is charged and you will unnecessarily land up paying a whole lot of money because you are uh, you, are, you have basically requested an Elastic IP address but you are not using it. Okay, so please ensure that you delete and release all your resources after you complete this, uh, this scenario. Okay. Now let's jump into the demo. So let me quickly switch to my AWS uh, account. <coughs> As you see, this is uh, our, my account and I'm going to stop using the spotlight now and go back to my mouse. Okay, there it is. Okay, so this is a VPC service and if you scroll down, you will see it actually under networking and content delivery so it's right here so let's click on vpc okay so our first step was that within aws within a region we need to create our vpc so i'm logged in in aws my region is north virginia as you see over here and now we will go ahead and create a vpc right here now as, as i told you uh, typically aws will give you a vpc wizard so if i click on launch wizard you will see this is scenario one this is exactly what we are trying to do vpc with a single public subnet but we will not be using a, the vpc wizard for this demo we will actually create this scenario one uh, manually by ourselves okay so let's go back to vpc okay and then go to your vpcs in right here Okay, so let's click on create VPC and I'm going to give it a name as my scenario one VPC. Okay, I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to use this tag with every resource or at least all the resources that we will provision manually to ensure that uh, we know that these resources belong to this VPC. So I'm going to give the CIDR block over here as 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Okay, the tenancy is default and let's click on yes, create. Okay, so this should go ahead and provision this VPC. So here it is. The VPC has been provisioned as you see, it's right here. Okay, now, after we've provisioned the VPC, as you see, there will be a route table that should have been created as well. And it is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. So I'm gonna give it a name, RT. Okay. So this is my scenario one VPC route table, it's right here. So after we've created the VPC, let's go ahead and create a subnet. Okay, so I'm going to click on create subnet. I'm going to give the same tag here and I'm going to say public subnet one. We're going to select our VPC right here. And now we will probably use, I think I'm going to use US East. 1a and I'm going to give the CIDR block as 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and hit create. So as you see our subnet has been created. It's right here and it's available. Okay, so right now this is the route table that is associated to this subnet. So let's go ahead and look at this route table and we are going to associate this subnet to this route table so there it is it's associated awesome is it associated no it's not sorry let's click on associate and then 
Take on C. Okay, so now our uh, subnet is associated. Now, since we have to create one single public subnet in order to ensure that this subnet is truly public, we need to ensure that we add internet gateway. So let's go ahead and provision an internet gateway. So I'm gonna go ahead and provision an internet gateway over here. I'm gonna give the same tag and IGW. IGW stands for internet gateway and click create and our gateway should be provisioned. Okay, so it's provisioned, but it is not attached to any VPC. So we need to go ahead and attach it. So let's click on attach to VPC. There it is. Click on attach. And now our gateway has attached to our VPC. So after our gateway has been attached to our VPC, remember that one of the key things that we need to do is we need to direct the non-local traffic to our internet gateway. So let's go back to our route table. Click on routes, click on edit. And over here we will add another route. 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, slash 0, which is the non-local traffic. And as you see, we automatically got the option of our internet gateway over here so we're going to select that and save it okay so what we have done is let's switch back we have completed all of these steps all the way until here the first four steps created the vpc created the subnet created internet gateway and added the non-local route to our route table and basically directed the traffic, non-local traffic to our internet gateway. Okay, so let me just flip back. So within AWS, within a region, we have created this VPC, we have created this subnet, we have create, we've added the internet gateway, as you see, and we have uh, added the custom route, that is the non-local traffic, uh, directing it to our internet gateway. So what is remaining? Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and add we, or basically launch our EC2 instance and then allocate uh, an elastic IP to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go back to EC2. Click on launch an instance and I'm gonna use free tier. I'm going to launch a Linux, Linux instance. If you want, you can use Windows or Ubuntu or any other instance of your choice. So I'm going to use a Linux instance over here. Click on select. I'm going to use T2 Micro because that's free tier eligible. Okay, we are only going to launch one instance over here. We need to ensure that we launch this instance in our VPC. So I'm going to go ahead and select my scenario one VPC. And this is the subnet. We only have one subnet in this. And I'm going to enable the public IP address. Okay. And I'm going to leave rest of the other properties as default. So let's click on add storage. I'm going to keep this as default as well. Add tags. So I'm going to add tag name. My scenario one VPC EC2 configure security groups. I'm going to create a new security group and I'm going to give it the name my scenario one VPCSG. My scenario one VPCSG. I'm going to open port 22 and I'm also going to open port 80. Okay, so let's open these two ports over here. Review and launch. So as you see, this is a summary of our EC2 instance. Let's go ahead and click launch. And I'm going to use this existing AWS key pair to launch this EC2 instance. Okay, so let's click on our EC2 instance. 
So as you see, our EC2 instance is coming up, it's right here. Okay, so let's wait for a few minutes and our EC2 instance should be up and running. This is the public IP address that has been associated with our EC2 instance, okay? So it's right here. So this is the public address that AWS provides by default. Now, if you remember, one of the things that we need to do is that we need to provision an elastic IP address and then associate that elastic IP address to our EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we scroll down, you will see elastic IPs. I'm going to go ahead and click on allocate new address. Okay, scope is BPC. Click on allocate. And this is the elastic IP that has been provisioned to us. So I'm going to go ahead and give this the same name and I'm going to give it EIP. Okay, so I remember that this is of my scenario one VPC. And as I mentioned to you earlier, please ensure that you release this elastic IP in, even before you terminate your EC2 instance because any elastic IP address that is not associated to a running EC2 instance is going to be charged and you will end up paying money unnecessarily. Okay, so let's go ahead and now associate our elastic IP address to an EC2 instance that we just launched. So it's right here, as you see, it's running. And click on associate. Okay, close. And if we go back over here to our EC2, as you see, our instance is running. And the public IP address has been associated. So let's copy this public IP address and now we will try to connect to this EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and click on AWS key pair. And I'm going to click on Putty right here. Okay. I'll copy my public IP address. Let me change the font size so you can see things clearly. I'm going to change the font size. And then let's go ahead and select our private key. So I'm going to select my private key. And then finally click on open. So as you see, our EC2 is up. So click on yes. We will use EC2 hyphen user to log in. So as you see, we are logged in now and we are connected to our EC2 instance. Okay, so to ensure that our EC2 instance is connected and we do have public connectivity to it, which is evident because we were able to SSH into it. But let's try and install something on this EC2 instance, okay? So let's try and install yum install httpd. Okay, so I believe I need to log in as root user. So let me log in as root. And now let's try and say yum install httpd. As you see, the installation is in progress. Okay, so after we have installed uh, httpd, the next thing would be to enable it. So the command for that is system tl, if I'm not wrong. Enable HTTPD. Okay, it's, I think it's sorry, sorry, it should be CTL. Okay, so it's there. And now finally, let's start HTTPD. So HTTPD is up and running. So let's test if it is truly up and running and uh, if we are able to access it over internet. So Let's go back over here and let's add another tab. 
app. So this is my public IP address. And as you see over here, we are able to access the test page using the public or the elastic IP address. And the test page is up and running. So you're able to actually connect to your EC2 instance that you've just launched and you've enabled HTTP service on it. Okay, uh, before we exit out, exit out. Before we terminate this uh, recording, I want to highlight to you that this is the documentation link online. Feel free to explore this link. Okay, this link actually explains the scenario in detail. Although it does use the, the VPC launch wizard to do that. But if you want to do it manually, feel free to, again, you know, follow these steps, freeze the video over here, and you should be able to launch your own custom uh, VPC with a single public subnet. So as I mentioned, the most important part over here is to ensure that you release and delete all resources. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's switch back to our AWS console. Okay. The first thing that you do need to do is go to Elastic IP address and say disassociate address. Okay. And after you disassociate the address, release the address. Okay. And then finally go to the EC2, the running instance ensure that you terminate your instance so terminate the instance so it's terminated and finally go back to vpc your vpcs select your vpc here and delete vpc so i believe my instances are still running so that's why it's not allowing me to delete right away but once my instance is terminated then it will allow you to delete the VPC. Okay, so uh, anyways, I will have my VPC deleted uh, once my instance is terminated, but ensure that you clear out all your resources. Okay, guys, so that's it from me. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please post them down below. Hello, all, and welcome to my AWS tutorial. Today, we will discuss how to create a VPC with public and private subnets and an add gateway without using the VPC wizard. Before we jump into the demo and learn how to create the scenario to VPC, a couple of things to keep in mind. First is in this tutorial, I am using an add gateway. Okay, so before you uh, provision an add gateway and start using uh, for your tutorial whenever you're uh, implementing or following this tutorial on your own, I would certainly request you to review the pricing of the NAT gateway. So for this discussion, actually, I have opened that particular URL. This is the URL, as you see, and this is the pricing. So please ensure that you have seen the, uh, the cost for NAT gateway per hour. For example, in US East North Virginia, it is $0.045 per hour. And for rest of the other regions, it is mentioned right here. So let's say if you are in Mumbai or Singapore or Frankfurt, you should ensure that you've checked out the price for NAT Gateway. Um, the price per hour is uh, 0.056 for Mumbai and 0.059 for Singapore. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to also let you know is that in case you don't want to use a NAT gateway, you can also use a NAT instance instead. Okay. So for example, a lot of you guys might be using your free account and would probably have about 750 free hours or so for EC2 compute time. You can provision an a T2 micro EC2 instance using one of the community AMIs for NAT instance. So let me show you how that is done. So let me quickly go to my um, AWS account. So this is my AWS account. And if you click on launch instance, go to community AMIs and then search for NAT 
instance, you will see a whole bunch of NAT instances uh, are available. You can pretty much select whichever AMI you like. I would generally go for the first one and then provision it on a T-True micro instance and go ahead with the provisioning just like how you would provision a regular EC2 instance. Okay, so with that said, let's continue further ahead and review the architecture diagram for the scenario two VPC creation. Now, as, uh, as the name itself says, we will be creating this VPC with a public and a private subnet. And finally, we will also be adding a NAT gateway to that. So let's review this architecture diagram. So let me grab my pen. So here it is. So this is my, I got my pen now. So let me get this thing lowered down. Here, so we have AWS. In AWS, in a specific region, you could select any region of your choice. We will be creating a VPC with the CIDR block 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So this is the CIDR block of our VPC. In this VPC, we will be creating two subnets. The first subnet is going to be with a CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 24, as you see. And the second one is going to be with the CIDR block of 10.0.1.0.24. So these are our two subnets. After we have created our two subnets, we will go ahead and add internet gateway to our VPC. So basically you provision an internet gateway and you attach the internet gateway to your VPC. We will be looking at this while we create our VPC. After our internet gateway has been provisioned, we will associate our internet gateway to our uh, to one of our subnets, the subnet that we want uh, uh, to be publicly available. So this is a public subnet, right? So we will have to go ahead and modify its route table and ensure that all the non-local traffic, this, this denotes the non-local traffic, the Quadro um, 40 IP address. So as you see, 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0, which denotes the non-local traffic is being directed out to our internet gateway right here. And that's what essentially makes this particular subnet a public subnet because it has internet connectivity. After we have provisioned our internet gateway, one of the things that we will do is we will provision an EC2 instance over here. Okay, so we we'll provision one EC2 instance and associate an elastic IP with it. So this will uh, ensure that our EC2 instance is available publicly. Now, since we provision this EC2 instance in our public subnet, we should be able to connect to this EC2 instance using its elastic IP, um, using any um, you know, SSH connectivity because I'll be provisioning a Linux EC2 instance. So um, we will connect using PuTTY uh, and, uh, and the elastic IP address of this EC2 instance. So once we've connected to our EC2 instance, which is provisioned in our public subnet, we will basically try and ensure that the IP, uh, internet connectivity is present. So we'll try and install HTTPD, we'll enable HTTPD and eventually also start HTTPD on our Linux EC2 instance. And once our HTTPD is started, we should be able to access the test page over the web for this particular EC2 instance. So finally, we are able, once we have provisioned our EC2 instance in a public subnet, the next thing we will do is we will provision an EC2 instance right here, another EC2 instance in our private subnet, okay? And since this is private, we are not going to associate any elastic IP or anything of that sort. All that this is going to have is just a simple, straightforward private IP as per subnet. This is a private subnet right here. 
after we've provisioned our EC2 instance in our private subnet, the next thing that we will do is we will provide uh, provision a NAND gateway. That is just this guy. Okay, and as I showed you earlier, if you don't want to provision a NAND gateway, you can also provision a NAND instance. Now, after we've provisioned a NAND gateway, we will associate an elastic IP to it and ensure that you provision this NAT gateway or your NAT instance in your public subnet and associate an elastic IP address. It's important to associate an elastic IP address with a NAT gateway so that it is available for any external internet connectivity. Now NAT actually stands for Network Address Translation. So essentially any uh, server that is present in your public uh, in your private subnet and does not have direct internet connectivity can access internet via your NAT gateway. So this EC2 instance that we have provisioned in our uh, in our private subnet, this guy right here, will be able to connect to internet via our NAT gateway. Okay. So in order to test that, we need to do a couple of things. First is that we need to modify the route table and ensure that any non-local traffic, and again, the, the uh, Cordro zero IP address, okay? So this is the Cordro zero IP address. In this case, needs to be uh, directed to NAT gateway. So any non-local traffic, will be directed to a NAT gateway. And then we will, uh, once we've modified the route table associated with our private subnet, we will try and install some updates, maybe install HTTPD or Docker on our private EC2 instance. And it should be able to do that because it should be able to connect to internet um, via our NAT gateway. Another thing that you want to keep in mind after you've provisioned your NAT gateway is that you need to ensure that you've disabled uh, any source and, and target checks on this instance or, or basically your NAT gateway, whatever you're using. And that is because uh, this is basically used only for any kind of uh, to and fro traffic. There's nothing happening on that particular uh, NAT gateway or that NAT instance that you have provisioned. Okay, so I think we have reviewed the diagram overall pretty well. So the next thing is uh, to go ahead and let me first go ahead and delete all my drawings. Okay, and shift back to my mouse pointer. Okay. So what I have done is actually I have gone ahead and enlisted all the steps that we will be following in this uh, particular tutorial. So feel free to pause the video right here, okay, and follow through these steps. So this is the first set of steps when we are creating the VPC, the two subnets. As you see, we are directing our uh, non-local traffic to internet gateway, etc., and finally connecting to our EC2 instance once it's provisioned and checking internet connectivity as we had discussed uh, uh, by installing HTTPD, enabling and starting HTTPD and finally testing our test page. And in the next set of steps that I have here is basically provisioning the EC2 instance in a private subnet, adding NAT gateway, uh, requesting el elastic IP for an ad gateway. And then finally, one of the things that we will do is, is this step. We will basically SSH from our public EC2 instance to our private EC2 instance. Now, if you don't know how to SSH from one Linux EC2 instance to another, please refer to my video, how to SSH from one Linux EC2 instance to another. I will have the URL posted in the description of this video. Okay, and once we have successfully SSH from our private, uh, sorry, from our public EC2 instance to our private EC2 instance, we will go ahead and install HTTP and Docker. But the most important thing for this particular tutorial is that you release and delete all resources, especially 
the NAD gateway and the elastic IPs. Uh, as you saw, NAD gateway has a considerable amount of price. So if you have just left it around for even of a couple of hours, you could actually, you know, gather uh, a substantial amount of costs. The cost buildup will be very fast. Also, just don't go ahead and terminate your EC2 instances, especially the ones uh, that are provisioned in your public subnet. For example, if you provision a NAT instance or the Linux EC2 instance, ensure that you release the elastic IPs first and then terminate your EC2 instance because any elastic IP that is not associated or is not um, used basically is going to be uh, um, is going to be charged for. So ensure that you just don't terminate your uh, EC2 instance, but you actually uh, disassociate your Elastic IP, release your Elastic IP, and then go ahead and terminate your EC2 instances. Okay, so with that, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our little drawing here. So first thing that we need to do is go ahead and provision our VPC that is uh, with the CIDR block 10.1.0.0 slash 16. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to my AWS account. So this is my AWS account. Okay. And I'm going to go to VPC and click on your VPCs and click on create VPC. So I'm going to go ahead and say my VPC and give it a side of block of 10.0.0.0 slash 16 default. 10 and C is going to be default. I don't want uh, IPv6. I'm going to go ahead and click on yes, create. So as you see, our VPC has been created. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and create our two subnets. So as you see, the first subnet is 10.0.0.24 and 10.0.1.0.24. So we'll go ahead and create these two subnets. So click on subnets, click on create subnet and say um, my VPC public subnet and I'm going to give select VPC my VPC availability zone I'm going to use US East 1A and I'm going to give the side of block as 10.0.0.0 slash 16 okay and click on create so our subnet should have been created now let's go ahead and create a private subnet so we're going to give it the name as my VPC private subnet. I'm going to go ahead and select my VPC. I'm going to put it in 1B. I'm going to give it the side of block of 1.0.1, sorry, 10.0.1.0 slash 16. And click on create. Um, Oh, slash uh, 24 my bad it should be a uh, subnet should be slash 24 that's why it was giving me an error so it is 10.0.1.0 slash 24 okay mm, cancel this let me check what was my what was my cider block for this okay so I by mistake, I created this, so I need to delete this. So let me go ahead and delete my public subnet. Okay, so we'll have to go ahead and create the subnets again. So sorry about that. So my VPC public subnet. Okay, and the side of block should be 10.0. 0, 0 slash 24. So click on create. Okay. And and this is our subnet right here. 
and now let's create another subnet my vpc and this is going to be a private subnet let me go and select my vpc availability is going to be 1b and the cider block is 10.0 1.0 slash 24 and this is a private subnet so let's go and click on create okay so as you see i'm going to put in my vpc right here and these are two subnets that we have here so go ahead and do it this way so this we have a public subnet and we have a private subnet. So this is our CIDR block for private, and this is our CIDR block for public. So what we have done so far is we've created a VPC. Okay, let me grab my pen. So, okay, so we've created our VPC. We've created our public subnet, and we have created our private subnet. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and provision our internet gateway. Okay, so let me clear all drawings. So let's go ahead and provision our internet gateway. So let's click on internet gateways and click on internet, create internet gateway, say my VPC IGW and click on create. And then finally, click on Actions, Attach to VPC, and we will select My VPC right here and click on Attach. Okay, so we have now provisioned our internet gateway. So the next step for us would be to go ahead and provision an uh, EC2 instance in a public subnet and associate an elastic IP. But before we do that, we need to ensure that we change the route table associated with our uh, public subnet and ensure that internet gateway connectivity has been established. Okay, so let's first go ahead and see if we have what route tables we have. So by default, uh, we have one route table over here, as you see, and there are no subnets associated to that. So let us first associate uh, one subnet to this. So click on routes. So I click on subnet associations, click on edit, and then click on public subnet and click on save. So now our public subnet has been associated with this route table. So let's give it some names. So my public subnet route table okay so this is a route table associated with it so i'm going to give my vpc public subnet route table and so we've associated our public subnet to this now this is a subnet that we need to modify the routes for so we'll go ahead and now modify the route for this particular route table and have our non-local traffic directed to our internet gateway. So we go ahead and click on add another route and we'll put the quadro, uh, Z, quadro zero uh, IP address slash, slash zero right here. And we'll associate that with uh, our internet gateway. As you see, our internet gateway is showing up right here. So you go and select our internet gateway and click on save. Okay, so our internet gateway is now associated to the route table that is associated with our public subnet. So that essentially means this route table, the one that, uh, let me circle that for you. We just modified this route table. So we got this route in place for internet gateway. Okay, and we got this route in place for our public subnet. So we have two, one local and one for our internet gateway, as you see. 
is right here, these two. Okay, fine. So the next thing is to go ahead and uh, provision an EC2 instance and associate an elastic IP in a public subnet. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to EC2. Launch an instance. I'm gonna launch free tier. I'm gonna launch an EC2, uh, Linux EC2 instance. I'm gonna say, uh, select configure instance details. I'm only going to launch one instance. I'm going to launch it in my VPC and I'm going to launch this in my public subnet. And I'm going to associate a, uh, a public IP to it and rest of the other properties I'm going to keep as default. So next is to add storage. So I'm going to keep this general purpose. Um, any tags if you want, so you can probably give name my VPC public EC2. Okay, security group. I'm gonna create a new security group, so it's gonna be my VPC EC2. And I'll go ahead and enable only port 22 on this, so let me just give SG instead of EC2. So that just helps in ensuring that this is a, a security group right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on review and launch. And we have everything in place. So let's go ahead and click on launch. I'm gonna use the uh, AWS key pair that I have within this region for this EC2 instance, and then go ahead and launch instances. So as you see, uh, instance has been launched and is currently being provisioned. Now, as you see, our instance has a public IP address and a private IP address. Okay, so it's currently in a pending state and in a few minutes, you should be able to see that it is up and running. So yeah, there it is, it is running now. So the next thing that we will do is we will go ahead and um, provision an elastic IP address and have that IP address associated with our EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and create an elastic IP. So we'll go ahead and click on allocate new address. So the scope is VPC, we'll go ahead and click on allocate. And this is the elastic IP that has been allocated to us. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to associate this address with an EC2 instance. So click on associate and in resource type have instance and then go ahead and select our EC2 instance that is running in our public subnet. So let's select this EC2 instance and then finally click on associate. So our address was associated successfully. Click on close. And now if we go back to our EC2 and look at our EC2 instance right here, the one that we provisioned, you will see that our IP address has been associated. So the next thing if, that we should do is we should go ahead and try an SSH uh, to this EC2 instance and try to check its uh, internet connectivity. So let's go ahead and copy our uh, IP address and we are going to use PuTTY to SSH into this EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and double click on PuTTY.exe. Um, copy our IP address here. I am going to increase the font size a little bit so that you can see it distinctly. And then finally, we will select our private key. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my private key and click on open. So as you see our EC2 instance is up and running. Click on yes for connection. I'm gonna use the default user, EC2 hyphen user and hit enter. And there you are connected to your EC2 instance 
in your public subnet. Now let's go ahead and switch to the root user okay? and try and install HTTPD. Okay, hit enter after typing yum install HTTPD. And as you see, we do have internet connectivity with this instance because we had associated internet gateway to our subnet and eventually made it a public subnet. So click on yes and continue with the installation. After we have installed HTTPD, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to enable HTTPD. So the command for that is sudo systemctl enable HTTPD and hit enter. As you see now, HTTPD has been enabled. The next thing that we will do is we will start HTTPD. So again, the command for that is sudo systemctl start HTTPD and hit enter. So as you see, our HTTPD service has been started on this EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and check our test page. So let's uh, go on Chrome and copy our public uh, Elastic IP address right here and hit enter. And the test page should show up. Yep, it's saying it's taking too long. I hope I have the right address, which I believe I do. Okay, let's try again. Sometimes this happens, so it takes a while for it to launch. Let me see if both my checks are done. So yes, my HTTPD is been enabled. Okay, so I think I figured out uh, why I'm not able to uh, connect to my EC2 instance. So if you remember when we provisioned this EC2 instance in our security group right here, we had only enabled port 22. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and add root add HTTP 80 and click on save. And now if you go back to this and hit enter and there it is, your test page showed up. So we are able to now look at our test page running on our public EC2 instance. Okay, so what we have done so far guys is we have basically completed uh, until here. So we've provisioned this web server and associated an Elastic IP address. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to provision this EC2 server and this is in our private subnet and it does not have any Elastic IP. It only has a private IP address. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is our EC2 dashboard and we'll go ahead and click on launch instance. Again, free tier, select Linux, T2 micro, and we will launch this in our my VPC. And this time we will launch it in our private subnet and we will not have any public IP associated with this EC2 instance. Click on add storage, add tags, add security group. Okay, we will create a new security group, my VPC SG private, and we will only enable port 22. Now, if you want, you can leave this open or you could 
customize it with uh, any specific security groups if you want that only um, uh, is any specific uh, security group within your VPC. For example, we had uh, my VPC SG, which is the uh, security group associated with our public subnet to be to have access um, and to able to uh, SSH to this EC2 instance in our private subnet, we can go ahead and limit that. So for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and limit that uh, limit access only to our uh, security group in uh, in our public subnet. So any EC2 instance that is launched in our public subnet and is associated with this uh, particular security group will be able to SSH to this particular uh, EC2 instance launched in our private subnet. So let's go ahead and click on review and launch. And this is our summary. And then finally, let's go ahead and click on launch. And I'm going to use the same key pair. So I'm going to check yes. And then finally click on launch instances. So as you see, our instance has been provisioned and is still currently in a pending state. As you see, we had only requested for a private IP. There is no public IP address associated with this particular uh, EC2 instance. And our instance is still coming up right now. Okay, so let's go switch back to our diagram. So what we have done so far is we provision this EC2 instance. We've also provisioned an EC2 instance in our private subnet. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and provision NAND gateway. That is this part and associate an elastic IP address to it. And then finally uh, change the, the private uh, route table. Okay, the route table that's associated to a private subnet and add a route to that, uh, to a NAT gateway, essentially. So let's go ahead and provision a NAT instance or NAT gateway, whatever you choose. So let me go back to my VPC. And as you see, you can see NAT gateways right there. So click on NAT gateways and create NAT gateway and we will provision. So you provision the NAT gateway in your public subnet, but you will modify the route table that is associated with your private subnet. So keep that in mind. So you provision this in your uh, public subnet and we need to ensure that the subnet that we are selecting is our public subnet. So hopefully I've selected the right one. Let me first go ahead and check which is my public subnet. So my public subnet is the one that ends with 72 C72E. So I believe that should be this one. This is my public subnet. And then we are going to allocate an elastic IP. So I'm going to click on create new elastic IP. And this is our new elastic IP that's been associated. And then click on create a NAND gateway. And your NAND gateway has been provisioned. Now, as you see, it's telling you, in order to use NAND gateway, ensure that you edit your route tables. And that's exactly what we are going to do. So we are going to click on edit route tables and then go into our route tables. Now, as you see, we had one route table that was associated with our public subnet. Hence, what we need to do is we need to create another route table that we are going to associate with our private subnet. So let's click on route table and we are going to give it a name on the similar line. So it's going to be my EPC hyphen private subnet route table. I'm going to associate it with my VPC and click on yes, create. And our route table should be created. 
Now, the first thing that we will do is go ahead and do a subnet association. And we will click on edit and we will select our private subnet and click on save. Okay, so we have associated a private subnet to this particular route table. Now we'll go ahead and edit routes. And then as you see, it has the local route right here. And then we will add another one. So basically what we will do is zero and we will add our uh, NAND gateway to this and click on save. Okay, so let's switch back. And as you see, this is the route table that we just created. Okay, this route table. So as you see, our NAND gateway is there and our local routes are also there. Okay, so we have both of these right here. Okay, so finally we have provisioned our uh, NAND gateway, we've associated Elastic IP, we have our EC2 instance, and we also modified our route table. So the next thing that we need to do is, we need to check if we are able to access internet from our private EC2 instance. That's basically ensuring that uh, the NAND gateway uh, connectivity is truly available. So first thing what we will do is we will basically try an SSH to our private instance, uh, private EC2 instance from our public EC2 instance. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and click hit clear and then we just scroll back right there. So this is basically um, our public EC2 instance. And from here, we will go ahead and SSH into our private EC2 instance. Now, in order for us to do that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to have the key pair created on this particular uh, public EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and create a key pair. So it's going to be Vim and then AWS key pair and hit enter. And finally, after the note, um, the editor comes up, hit on insert. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to your AWS key pair, open this in Notepad, just like how I have, copy everything. So, Control A, Control C, come back to your to your uh, SSH connectivity, and hit right click. And as you see, everything has been copied. Now hit escape and prep and key in colon W Q, small W Q as you see right there and hit enter. Now this key pair has been saved on our public EC2 instance. Now from this EC2 instance, we will SSH into our private EC2 instance. Now in order for us to do that, we need the IP address of our private EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and get the IP address of our private EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and click on EC2. And we should be able to see our instances right here. Okay. And this is our uh, private EC2. As you see, it only has the private IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and click on copy to clipboard go back here and type in SSH minus I give the name of your key pair file in my case as you see it is AWS key pair then type in EC2 hyphen user at and copy this IP address right there and hit enter so it's asking whether you want to continue connecting and I'm going to say yes. Now, as you see, I got an error over here. I got an error, permission denied. And that is because of the read write access on this particular key pair file that I just created. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and modify the read write access on that. So let's go ahead uh, and have the right command for that. So 
type in ch mod and then type in 600 aws key pair and hit enter now go ahead and execute the same command again and hit enter and there you are connected to your private ec2 instance so let me go ahead and clear this now we are connected to our private ec2 instance so we want to check if we are truly able to um, you know connect to internet and a nat gateway is truly functioning so the first thing that we want to do is we want to uh, log in as a root user and now we will try and install let's say httpd so yum install httpd and hit enter now if the nat gateway connectivity is working fine and our route tables and everything are uh, um, are associated and had the right routes this installation should continue so let's hit enter and check so as you see it's continuing and it's asking me if i want to proceed so i'm going to click on yes and as you see our httpd installation was successful so that essentially means that we do have nad gateway connectivity and internet connectivity on our private ec2 instance so let's try and install something else we'll try and install yum um, install i'm going to go ahead and install docker on this so hit enter so and as you see docker has installation has begun and docker is being currently being installed right now And there you go, our Docker installation has completed. So finally, if we have to go back to our diagram, we were able to connect uh, to internet using our EC2 instance via NAT gateway. And finally, we have um, implemented this entire VPC diagram successfully. So that's it from me, guys. Uh, again, just to reiterate the message, please ensure that you have released and deleted all your resources, especially your NAT gateway and your elastic IPs. So let me actually go ahead and do that. So I'm basically going to terminate my connectivity to my private EC2 first. And there you go. I'm out of my private EC2 back to my public EC2 and then finally out of my public EC2. The first thing that we will do is we will go ahead and delete our NAD gateway. So let's do that. So NAD gateways, select your NAD gateway, click on action, delete NAD gateway, delete NAD gateway. It's done, it's gone. Ensure that the elastic IP associated uh, with your NAD gateway is also released. Okay, it will eventually release. I think it's, it's in the process of releasing it. Okay, we'll come back to that. The next thing is we need to go ahead and uh, release our elastic IPs for our EC2 instance. So this is our EC2 instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassociate the address. So the address has been disassociated. Now go ahead and release the address and click on release. And as you see, now it is allowing me to release the address that was associated with my NAT gateway as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and release that address. So I've released my elastic IPs and my NAT gateway has been deleted as well. I'm going to go now to my EC2 dashboard and terminate both my instances. So let's go ahead and click on terminate and click on yes. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and delete my VPC. So select your VPC, delete VPC. I think the instances are still 
going on uh, still running so it is going to take a while i hope my nat gateway got deleted yes it did so that's good and my elastic ips have been released okay now let's try and delete our vpc again so click on delete vpc okay still now Let's see if our instances have been terminated. Yes, they are still in the process of shutting down. So once these instances are shut down and terminated, then it will allow me to terminate my, uh, delete my VPC. So as I showed you, go into your VPCs, your VPCs, select your VPC, Click on actions, delete VPC, and have it deleted. It's taking us a while, but you know how to go ahead and delete your VPC. So please ensure, guys, that you delete all your um, resources. So that's it from me, guys. Uh, please feel free to leave your comments uh, at the bottom. Um, if you want me to create videos on any specific topic, do let me know, and I'll certainly have them created. If not, then I will see you um, in some other video shortly. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial on VPC peering. Today we will see how we can peer two VPCs to two subnets in one VPC. Before we jump into the demo, let us review the architectural diagram and the route table. So as you see, we have three VPCs right here. We have VPC A. Let me grab my highlighter. So there, it is. that's my spotlight right there. So as you see, we have uh, VPC A right here. And VPC A has the CIDR block of 172.16.0.0 slash 16. We have VPC B. VPC B has the CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And we have VPC C, which also has the same CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 16. In our VPC A, we have two subnets and both the subnets are private. As you see, we have private subnet X and we have private subnet Y. The CIDR block of private subnet X is 172.16.0.0 slash 24. And the subnet block of private subnet Y is 172.16.1.0 slash 24. Similarly, we have a public subnet over here in VPC B and the CIDR block of a public subnet is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And as you see, the reason I said this is a public subnet is because I do have an internet gateway connected to my VPC B. Similarly, over here, as you see in VPC C, I have one public subnet right there. Yeah, sorry, I lost my spotlight. So I have one public subnet right there over here. And uh, the CIDR block of this particular public subnet is similar to the VPC B CIDR block that is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Again, this is a public subnet because I do have an internet gateway connected to my VPC. Okay, so in as a part of our uh, VPC peering tutorial, what we will be doing is we will be establishing a peering connection between our VPC A private subnet X and our VPC B public subnet. As well as we will be establishing another peering connection between our VPC A private subnet Y and our VPC C public subnet right there. And we will be giving them names as PCX as you see four A's and four B's and PCX again, four A's and four C's. Okay. I mean, you could pretty much give any uh, name that you like. It's totally up to you. Now for this particular demo, 
I will be basically provisioning these VPCs in three different regions. Like for example, I will be provisioning VPC A in North Virginia, VPC B in Ohio, and VPC C in Northern California. You could have these VPCs in one single region. You could have them in different regions as per your choice. You could have them in totally different AWSs account and the same region. It's totally up to you. But in, for this particular demo, I will be provisioning the, all these three VPCs in my own account, but in three different regions. Okay. And I think we've reviewed through the entire diagram right there. So after we have established our uh, VPCs and, and querying connections between them, in order to test whether these VPCs can truly communicate with each other, we will be launching a couple of EC2 instances, instances in each of the subnets. So as you see, we will launch an EC2 instance in both our private subnets and as well as our public subnets. And if these uh, VPCs are truly peered to each other, we should be able to communicate with our EC2 instance in our private subnet via our EC2 instance in our public subnet. Okay, uh, that's basically an EC2 instance in our VPC B. Uh, we should be able to SSH into our EC2 instance in our private subnet X. Now for this demo, all the EC2 instances that I will be provisioning are going to be Linux instances, but you could pretty much use any other instance type that you like. You use Windows or you could use anything else. Okay, so um, let's get started with uh, this particular demo. So let me switch uh, to my AWS account. This is my AWS account right here. And I'm currently, as you see, I'm in region North Virginia. And this is the region where we will be creating our VPC A. So let's go ahead and create our VPC. So let's click on create VPC. And I'm gonna give it the name as VPC A. And the CIDR block of our VPC is gonna be 172.16.0.0.0. And I'm going to let the tenancy be default. Let's click on yes, create. And as you see, our VPC got created. Okay, so after we have created our VPC, the next thing that we will do in this VPC is basically go ahead and create uh, two subnets. So let's go ahead and create a subnet and remember, um, this VPC is private and so are the subnets going to be private. So we are not going to provision any internet gateway. So let's click on create subnet and I'm going to give it the name VPC A, as you see, a subnet, um, I'm going to say private subnet X and I'm going to say VPC A right here. Okay, and you could choose any availability zone. I'm going to choose US East 1A, and our subnet CIDR block is going to be 172.16.0.0 slash 24. And let's click on create. So this is going to be our subnet X. So our subnet has got created. Similarly, we will create a subnet Y, which is also going to be a private subnet. So we're going to give it the name VPC A. Private subnet Y, VPC A, availability zone. I'm going to put it in 1B. And I'm going to give it the CIDR block of 172.16.1.0.0. And click on create. So as you see, both our subnets got uh, created. I'm going to give it a filter of VPC A. In as you see, these are both our subnets are right here. Okay, awesome. 
So both our subnets got created. Now let's see what, uh, which is the next VPC that we have. So let's go back to our diagram. So as you see, we created basically, let me grab my pen right there. So we went ahead and created VPC A. We created subnet um, VPC, uh, subnet X in VPC A and subnet Y in VPC A. We are yet to create our route tables, but we will shortly get there. Okay, so uh, the next thing that we will do is we'll go ahead and create VPC B and its public subnet. So let me clear my drawings and go back to mouse. Okay, so let me switch back to my AWS account and I will be creating VPC B in uh, region US East Ohio. So let me switch my regions. And that's where we are going to create a VPC. So let's click on create VPC. It's going to be VPC B. And the cider block of this VPC is going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And the tenancy is going to be default. Let's click on yes, create. Now both VPC B and VPC C are, have public subnets. That essentially means that we need to provision uh, an internet gateway and associate it to our VPC. So let's go ahead and do that. So click on internet gateway, create internet gateway, and I'm going to say VPC B I G W. Okay. And let's click on create. That's our internet gateway right there. It's currently detached. So let's go ahead and attach it to a VPC and we are going to select our VPC B right there and click on attach. Okay, so after we have created a VPC, added an internet gateway, let's click on subnets and create one public subnet. Okay, so it's going to be, the subnet is going to be VPC B hyphen public subnet. And we're going to create this in VPC B. The CIDR block, our, sorry, our availability zone is going to be, I'm going to put it in US East to A, and I'm going to give it a CIDR block of uh, 10.0.0.0/24, and click on Create. Okay, and close. So there it is. That's where our uh, that's where our subnet is right there. Okay, and we do have internet gateway connected. Okay, so let's switch back to our drawing and let me grab my pencil. So what we went ahead and we did was we created this VPC with the CIDR block and this particular subnet. What we need to do now is we need to create VPC C with this particular CIDR block. And again, it has an internet gateway. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let me go ahead and clear my drawings, with my mouse and shift back to my AWS account. So I'm gonna create my VPC B, sorry, VPC C in uh, Northern California. So let's select Northern California and click on your VPC, click on create VPC and give it the name VPC C right there. The CIDR block is same, so it's gonna be 10 uh, zero. Zero, zero, zero slash 16. So both VPC B and VPC C have the same side of block. The tenancy is going to be default and click on yes, create. So as you see, our VPC got created. Now again, um, this VPC is going to have public access. So I'm going to add internet gateway. So let's click on internet gateways right there. Click on create internet gateway and I'm going to say VPC C I G W and click on create. And that's where our internet gateway is. As you see, our internet gateway is detached. So we need to go ahead and attach it to our VPC C. So I'm going to click on attach to VPC and select VPC C right here and click on attach. Okay. 
So our internet gateway got created and attached to our VPC. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and provision our subnet. So let's click on subnets and click on create subnet. And I'm going to give it a name, VPC C public subnet. And we're going to select VPC C right there. It's up to you, whatever availability zone you want to select. I'm going to select US West 1B. And I'm going to give the subnet the cider block of uh, 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and click on create. And that's where our subnet is right there. Okay, and we can always filter it by its name tag, say VPCC, hit enter, and that's where our subnet is. Okay, so let's switch back to our pretty picture. So this is our drawing. And as you see, what we have done so far is we have provisioned all the, v all the VPCs, all three VPCs, that is A, B, and C. We have created subnets, both private subnets in A and public subnet in both um, B and C. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to take care of our route tables. So as you see in VPC A, we have two route tables, one that is associated with our subnet X and the other one that is associated with our subnet Y. And in VPC B, we have only one particular route table which should be provisioned. And again, in VPC C, we have only one route table which should be provisioned. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we are currently in our Northern California region where we have our VPC C. So let's click on our VPCs. And this is our route table right here. So let's click on our route table. And this is our route table. So I'm gonna give it VPC C. And I believe the name of the route table was public subnet RT. So I'm gonna give it VPC C public subnet RT. Okay, click on yes. And as you see our local route as expected is present right there. And do we have any subnet associations? Not yet, so let's go ahead and click on edit, associate a subnet and click on save. So as you see, our subnet is now associated and our route is present. So let me switch back. So essentially we have our subnet associated and we have our local route. The next thing that we need to do is remember we had added internet gateway because this uh, VPC does have internet connectivity. So we need to go ahead and add route to our internet gateway. So let's go ahead and do that. So click on edit, add another route and it's gonna be 0, .0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0 slash 0. And as you see, we do get our internet gateway as an option. Select that and click on save. Okay, so our, uh, our route table for our VPCC is almost ready. Only thing that is missing is this uh, peering connection and that is only gonna be established once we peer our VPCs. Okay, so the next thing that we will do is we will go ahead and work on our route table for our VPC B. So let's switch to our region Ohio right here. And this is our VPC B, and this is the associated route table. So let's click on that. And the name of this particular route table is going to be VPC B public subnet RT. Okay, so again, we need to go and check what routes we have. As you see, we have the default route in. We don't have any subnets associated. So we need to go ahead and associate our, our subnet to this particular route table. So click on edit, select a subnet, click on save. And as you see, our subnet is now associated with this particular route table. 
And again, VPC B, just like VPC C, has uh, internet access. So we need to add our route, um, basically going um, to our internet gateway. So that's basically for any no non-local traffic being directed out to internet. So let's switch back, click on edit under routes, click add another route, 0 .0 0 .0 slash zero. And there it is, there is our VPCB internet gateway. Let's select that and click on save. So as you see, we have our local route and we have a route going to internet gateway, which is essentially the first and the third route. And the second route over here is actually the peering connection and that will be established once we have a peering connection in place. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to work on our route tables for our VPC A for both our private subnet X and our uh, private subnet Y. So let's switch back. Let's change our region to Northern Virginia. Now, and let's select our VPC. So this is our VPC A. And as you see, we do have one route table associated to our VPC right now. So let's click on this route table. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a name. You can give it any name. So you can say VPC A, and I'm gonna say private subnet XRT, okay, and click yes. And let's check the routes. As you see, we only have the default local route in over here. And let's check on our subnet association. So as you see, we do not have any subnet associated to this. But since we have given the name uh, subnet X, we will go ahead and associate our subnet X to this particular route table. So let's click on edit and let's select our private subnet X and click on save. So as you see, our subnet is now associated to our VPC and our, we still just have the default route. Now this particular VPC is totally private. It does not have any internet connectivity. The next thing that we do need to do is we need to create a route table for our subnet Y. So let's click on create route table and we are going to give it the name VPC A private subnet Y R T and we're going to associate it to a VPC A and click on yes create. Okay, so I'm going to set a filter over here. Okay, right there. So we have this right here, VPCA, uh, sub, private subnet YRT. I missed the space, let me correct that. Okay, click yes. Okay, so we have selected our route table. As you see, by default, it has the local route to the VPC, and but it does not have any subnets associated to itself. So let's go ahead and click on edit and we will select our private subnet Y right here, click on save. And there it is. So we have associated our private subnet Y to our route table right here. Okay, so let's switch back to our route table. So as you see, we have the local route for both our private uh, subnet X and our private subnet Y route tables. And the other two routes are basically uh, for the peering connections and they will be established once we have that in place. So let's go back to our diagram on left. So if you see, we have established our VPC with our subnets and our route table as well. Right here, we have our VPC C with a subnet and a route table and we have VPC A with both the subnets and both the route tables, okay? Except for the peering connections. So obviously the next thing that we need to do is we need to establish the peering connection between A and B, okay? And this is gonna be the name of a peering connection right there. Okay, so let me 
clear all my drawings and switch back to my AWS account. So this is my AWS account right here and I am basically in region North Virginia and this is our VPC A right here. And what we are going to do is we are going to initiate a VPC connection, basically a peering connection to our VPC B. So let's go ahead and click on peering connections and let's click on create peering connection and we are going to give this a name as PC PCX hyphen AAA BBB. There you go. And the request is going to be a VPC A right there. And again, it gives you an option, as I said earlier as well, is it the, the VPC that you're peering to, is that in the same account or is that in a different account? So in my case, this is in the same account, but it's in a different region. So I'm going to select my account and another region and my VPC B is in um, US East to Ohio. So I'm going to let that remain. What we need to provide over here is the VPC ID and we will have to go to uh, basically switch our, uh, if I switch, I lose everything maybe. So let me see if I can create, uh, open another tab right there. Okay, so there it is. So this is my another tab and I'm gonna switch my regions right here to East Ohio. And then I'm going to go and click on our VPCs, go to VPC B and copy this VPC ID right here. And again, I'm going to go to my peering connection and I'm going to paste this VPC ID here and then click on create peering connection. And as you see, our peering connection got created and actually shows you all the details of the requester and the acceptor VPC. So in this case, the requester is VPC A and the acceptor VPC will be VPC B. So let's go ahead and click on OK. So as you see, our peering connection is currently in pending acceptance status and this will become active once our VPC B goes ahead and accepts this uh, VPC peering request. Okay, so let's uh, go to our region Ohio where we have a VPC B right there. And let's go ahead and click on peering connections. And as you see, we do have a pending acceptance request and I'm gonna go ahead and name this uh, VPC connection with the same name so that we don't get confused and click on yes. And let's filter it by its name tag and there it is. So as you see currently it's in a pending acceptance status and the moment I accept it uh, you will be able to see the acceptor VPC cider blog and the status will become active. So let's go ahead and accept this uh, VPC peering connection request. So let's click on actions then click on accept request and say yes accept. Click on close and as you see the status is active. And now you are able to see the acceptor VPC CIDR block as well. Okay, so let's go back uh, to our uh, region North Virginia where we have our uh, VPC A. And as you see, it is currently still showing in pending acceptance. But when I, once I refresh it, then you will see that the status is active and we can see the CIDR block of our acceptor VPC as well. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram. And as you see, let me grab my pen right there. So what we have done is we have created this peering connection and this peering connection is now active. Next thing that we will do is we'll create this peering connection between VPC A and VPC C and we will activate this peering connection. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let me, again, we are in our region, North Virginia. Let me switch back to my VPCs. It's right there. So this is our VPC A. And then we'll go back to peering connections. And we are going to create a new request right here. And we are going to give it the name as PCX hyphen AAA CCC. There you go. And the request is going to be VPC A. 
and again it is uh, the VPCC is in my account but in a different region so I'm going to select my account and another region the region for VPCC is Northern California and again we will need to go and copy the VPC ID from uh, from Northern California so I'm going to go back over here change this to Northern California and go to my VPCs click on VPCC and go ahead and copy this VPC ID and switch back to my peering request and paste this VPC ID right here and click on create peering connection so as you see up our connection our connection request was successful and we can click on OK and as you see currently it is in a pending acceptance status okay and we can now see the acceptor vpc cider block okay so now let's go back to our california region and as you see our region over here is northern california let's click on peering connections and we do have a pending request and i'm going to name this the same aaa and ccc okay so as you see our request is in pending acceptance and we can now see acceptor vpc cider block so let's go ahead and accept this request so let's click on accept request click yes accept close and the connection is active and established and you can see acceptor vpc cider block right there so if we go back to our uh, north virginia region right here and refresh this this connection status should now be active as you see it's active and you can see acceptor vpc cider block at the bottom okay so this is our architectural diagram again so essentially what we have done is we have basically created this entire skeleton other than the ec2 instances in this diagram but before we go ahead and launch our EC2 instances, remember, we have to go ahead and revise our route tables, okay? So we need to go ahead and add this particular route to our subnet X, add uh, our peering connection to our subnet Y, that is for peering connection between A and C, Again, we need to go ahead and modify our uh, public subnet route for VPC B and add peering connection between VPC A and B right here. And we need to modify our uh, route table for VPC C public subnet and add the peering connection for between VPC A and VPC C. So let's go ahead and modify our route tables Okay, so let me switch back to my AWS account. So we are currently in Northern Virginia where we have our VPCA and we have our route tables right here. Okay, so let's select our uh, VPCA subnet X RT and let's click on routes and let's click on edit. Now, if you remember our subnet X is VPC or we have a VPC connection to VPC B. So we need to select PCX uh, AB uh, peering connection. So let's click on add another route and we are going to put in the cider block of our VPC B right here, slash 16. And when you come here, we need to select our VPC connect peering connection between a VPC A and a VPC B, which is this one. So let's go ahead and click on save right there. So as you see, we have two routes right in here, just like for we have over here, we have the local route and we have the route going to PCX um, AB. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and modify the route for our VPC subnet Y. And again, we are going to click on edit, add another route and we are going to add uh, basically key in the cider block for our VPCC and that is uh, 10.0.0.0 slash 16 
but we will select the peering connection to our VPC C. So let's go ahead and select PCX AC right there and click on save. So if you see for our subnet Y, we have two routes, the local route and the route going to our uh, VPC C, which is essentially these two routes right here, as you can see where my mouse is. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and modify our route table for our VPC B. So this is our route table for our VPC B. We need to go ahead and click on routes and click on edit and add another route right here. And this route is going to go back to our VPC A. And the CIDR block for VPC A is 172.16.0.0 slash 16. And this needs to go back to our peering connection between our VPC A and B, which is PCX AB. So let's select that and click on save. So as you see, we have three routes right in over here, the local, uh, our internet gateway route and our uh, peering connection route. So just like how we have over here, we have a local, a peering connection and our internet gateway route. The order really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's switch our region to Northern California where we have a VPCC. Okay, and this is our uh, route table for VPCC. So let's select that, click on routes, click on edit. And we need to add a route going back to our VPCA. So let's click on another route and we need to key in the CIDR block of our VPCA, which is 172.16.0.0 slash 16. And we need to select our uh, peering connection between our VPCA and C, which is PCXAC. So let's select that and click on save. So as you see, we have three routes right in over here. And we have three routes over here for VPCC, local, peering, and internet gateway. Local, internet gateway, and our peering connection between A and C. So essentially, we have basically set up this entire route table. And all our VPCs and our subnets are connected with each other. And they should be able to communicate with each other. So let us go ahead and test that. So in order to test that, what we will be doing is we will launch an EC2 instance in each of the subnets. So a total of four instances, one in each subnet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna switch back to my uh, Northern Virginia where we have a VPCA. And I'm gonna go ahead and select EC2. And Click on launch instance. I'm going to use free tier and I'm going to launch an EC2 Linux instance. So let's click on select. Select T2 micro. Okay, one instance, select VPC as VPC A. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to provision this in my private VPC. And everything else is going to remain default. Next, next. Next, I'm going to create a new security group. So I'm going to say VPC A S G, and I'm going to enable um, basically port SS uh, 22 to SSH into this uh, particular EC2 instance and say review and launch. So let's go ahead and review and launch now. Okay, and I'm going to use my existing key pair, which is AWS key pair and click on launch instances. So our instance has been launched right here. Okay, so VPC A EC2. And this EC2 was launched in subnet, subnet X. Okay, so it's, it's coming up. Let's go ahead and launch another instance. Again, free tier, EC2, Linux, general purpose. Everything is saved. I'm gonna go ahead and select VPC A. And this time I'm gonna provision this instance in subnet Y. And 
next, next security group. I have an existing security group. So I'm going to use VPC ASG, review and launch, launch, select my AWS key pair and click on launch instances. So as you see, our instance has been launched. This is VPC A, EC2, subnet Y. And again, our instance is coming up. So I'm going to say name is VPC A. And we should be able to see both our instances running right here. And again, these instances just have public IP addresses, as you can see. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and provision and public instance uh, in Ohio. So let's go ahead and click on launch instance right here. Free tier. Again, this is going to be a Linux instance. Select next. It's going to be one. I'm going to launch it in my VPC B in my public subnet. But this time I'm going to enable a public IP address. I'm going to say auto assign public IP enable, click on add storage, I'm going to leave that default. Security group, I'm going to create a new security group. So this is going to be VPC B, S, G. And again, I'm going to enable port 22 and click on review and launch, launch. I do have a key pair in my Ohio region. So I'm going to use the very same key pair, click on acknowledge and click on launch instances right there. So there you have, and we are going to give this VPC B EC2. And we only have one subnet, so it doesn't matter. There you go, so it's coming up. Okay, so by the time this uh, instance comes up, let's go ahead and pro provision another public instance in Northern California and VPC C. So launch instance, free tier. So I'm going to select so free tier right there. Select. Next, as we we'll select VPC C again, public subnet. I'm going to enable auto assign public IP and then rest all is all default, add storage default, create a security group right here. So I'm going to give it VPC C hyphen SG. I'm going to enable port 22, click review and launch launch i do have a key pair in california so i'm going to use that click on acknowledge and launch instances so essentially we we have launched a total of four instances in each of these subnets so one over here let me grab my spotlight so one over here in this public subnet one year and one in private subnet x and one in private subnet y so we have a total of for EC2 instances currently running. Okay, so let's switch back. And now what we will do is, uh, we will basically SSH into our public uh, EC2 instance and VPC B, and then try and connect basically SSH into our EC2 instance in uh, our VPC A's private subnet X. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's switch to Ohio. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to EC2. My instances, my instance should be up and running. As you see, it's still initializing, but I do have a public IP, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then we are going to use uh, basically putty to connect to this particular EC2 instance. So let's try and do that. So I'm gonna copy my IP address right here. I'm gonna increase the font size so that you can read easily. And then I'm gonna use my key pair to log in. So this is my Ohio private key. Click on open. As you see our instance is up and it's right there. I'm going to use the default EC2 hyphen user to log in, click on enter, and we are connected. So we could easily SSH into our uh, instance in our uh, VPC B because it has internet connectivity. Now from here, 
because since we have a peering connection between uh, B and between B and and A, we should be able to SSH into our private instance right here in our subnet X in VPC A. So let's go ahead and grab its uh, IP address. So this is a Northern Virginia. This is a VPC A with our instance in VPC A subnet X and this is its private IP address. So let's copy that. Okay. And I'm gonna copy that and keep it over here in a notepad, okay? So before we uh, continue with our SSH, remember um, we need the private key, basically the PEM file to log it into this EC2 instance. So we will have to create that particular key on this EC2 instance right here. So in order to do that, let's switch to our uh, root account. Okay, so I'm switched to my root account and then I'm gonna say Vim AWS key pair, which is my key pair in my uh, North Virginia region that I used for VPCA. So I'll hit enter. Okay, so let's go back right here and key pairs and this is my AWS key pair. And this is my AWS key pair, PEM, right there. So I'm gonna open this in my notepad. And what we need to do is just control A, select everything, copy this, go back to our putty, click on insert and click on right click and everything is gonna be copied. Hit escape and then type in colon W Q, small W, small Q, hit enter. And as you see, our key pair got created right there. So now we should be uh, good to SSH in, but before we do that, we need to change the read permissions. So let's go ahead and change the permissions on this file to 600 key pair, and there you go. So now let's SSH into our private instance. So the command for that is SSH minus I, and then uh, our AWS, key pair and then ec2 hyphen user at the rate and let's copy our private instance id there it is copied paste it right here and hit enter this thing are you sure you want to connect i'm going to hit yes someone say yes and there you are so we are connected to our ec2 instance in that is launched in our VPC A private subnet X successfully. Okay, so just like how we connected from our, so let me grab my pencil right there. So we basically SSH'd in from our EC2 instance in our private sub, public subnet to our EC2 instance in our private subnet X right here. Similarly, what we will do is we will SSH from, uh, from our EC2 instance in our public subnet in VPC C to our private subnet instance in our VPC A private subnet Y. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll clear my drawings, switch back to my AWS account and switch to Northern California where we have our VPC C. We need the IP address of our instance running over here. So this is our VPC C AC2. Okay. So this is our instance running right here. And this is its public IP address. So let's copy that. And then I am basically going to Go to my California key pair, run party right from right there. Copy my IP address, change, increase the font. So I'm gonna make it bold, 16, okay. And select my key. So this is my AWS uh, California key pair right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that.
This is my private key pair. Click on open, open, and there you are. We are, we are connected to our EC2 instance and VPCC. So we're gonna log in with our EC2 to hyphen user, and we are logged in. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do again is we need to connect from here to our EC2 instance in our VPC A private subnet Y. And before we do that, we need to create our uh, key pair file over here. So in order to do that, let's switch to our root user. So this is our root user. We're going to do the same steps. Vim AWS key pair. Okay, go back and where is my key pair right there? This is my key pair, copy it, come back here, hit insert, right click, copy, hit escape, colon WQ and hit enter. So there it is, our key pair is right there. We are gonna modify its uh, read write access so this is our aws key pair right there okay and then finally we need to go back and get the ip address of our north virginia ec2 instance launched in our subnet y so right there let's copy this ip address and switch back and now we will ssh into this instance so the command for that is ssh minus i and then our key pair aws key pair ec2 hyphen user add the rate and copy ip address and hit enter we'll say yes and as you see we have successfully connected to our ec2 instance in a private subnet y in vpca so let's switch back to our picture. So we were basically able to establish both connections from our uh, VPC A to VPC, sorry, VPC B to VPC A private subnet X and our VPC C to VPC A private subnet Y successfully. So that's it from me guys. Uh, hope this helped you to clear your fundamentals uh, for VPC peering and this is a pretty common scenario especially in a lot of public uh, production environments you will see this and uh, do let me know if you have any experience working on a similar scenario I'll be more than happy to listen to your comments uh, please provide feedback hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial on VPC peering Today we will discuss how we can peer two VPCs together using IPv6. Before we go ahead with our uh, demo for this particular tutorial, let us understand a few things. The first thing is regarding CIDR blocks. As of now, AWS allows you to select or assign an IPv4 CIDR block to your VPC, but you cannot assign or select and IPv6 CIDR block for your VPC. IPv6 CIDR block is assigned by default by AWS or Amazon as of October 2018. Now this may change in the future and they might allow you to assign an IPv6 CIDR block just like how you assign IPv4 CIDR block, but at this point of time, you cannot select your own IPv6 CIDR block and assign it to your VPC. The other thing we need to understand is about cross-region VPC peering. So at this point of time, cross-region VPC peering supports IPv4 CIDR blocks, but it does not support IPv6. And this is as of October 2018, and this may change again in the future. So since we are going to peer two VPCs today using IPv6, both our VPCs will be in the same region. And this could be in any region. I'm going to use North Virginia for this demo, but feel free to use or and provision um, both these VPCs in any region of your choice. 
So before we jump into the demo, let us review the architectural diagram and what we will be implementing today. So as you see, as a part of our demo today, and let me quickly grab my spotlight. So there's my spotlight right there. So we will be implementing or basically provisioning two VPCs. One is VPC A right here, as you see. Our VPC A has an IPV cider block of 172.16.0.0 slash 16. And this is the IPV4 cider block that we will assign to our VPC A. And also when we are provisioning our VPC, we will enable uh, this VPC to have an IPv6 CIDR block that will be provisioned and assigned by Amazon directly. Along with VPC A, we will also provision VPC B and the CIDR block that is IPv4 CIDR block for our VPC B is going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Now again, we will assign this IPv CIDR block, IPv4 CIDR block to our VPC B, but and we will uh, enable IPv6 as well. Now IPv6 CIDR block is going to be assigned by Amazon. Both these VPCs will be provisioned in region North Virginia. And again, you could choose any region of your choice. I'm just uh, using North Virginia. Just ensure that since we are uh, we will be peering both these VPCs using IPv6. Both the VPCs are provisioned in the same region. The peering connection between uh, VPC A and VPC B will be called as PCXAB as shown right here. Now you could give any other name of your choice. I will be naming my peering connection as PCXAB. Now, before we go further ahead, let us also review the route tables associated with both of these VPCs. So as you see, for our VPC A, we have a single route table. And this route table has two local routes, one for IPv4 and the other one for IPv6. Now, along with these two uh, local routes, we will also have a peering connection going to VPC B for both IPv4 and IPv6. Similarly, if we review the route table of our VPC B, as you see, first we have two local routes for both IPv4 and IPv6. And again, we will modify this route table to add peering connections going back to our uh, VPC A and adding the peering connection over here for both IPv4 and IPv6. Okay, so let's go ahead with the demo. I'm gonna to switch to my AWS account. And as you see, I am currently in my North Virginia region. And this is the region which, wherein I will be provisioning both my VPCs. So let's go ahead and create a VPC A. So I'm gonna give it a name tag of VPC A and the CIDR block of 172.16.0.0 slash 16. And as I mentioned earlier, I will be enabling this particular VPC to have an IPv6 CIDR block provided by Amazon. We will leave the tenancy as default and click on yes, create. So as you see, our VPC has been provisioned. And this is our VPC ID right here. This is our IPv4 CIDR block, and this is our IPv6 CIDR block. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy some of this information and keep it handy. So let me just copy this. And I have a notepad right here. I'm gonna copy this here so that we have some of this handy right here. I need some basic information and what we will keep with us is the VPC ID. So I've copied the VPC ID and IPv4 and IPv6 CIDR block for our VPC A. So let's go back and now create VPC B.
So let's cre click on create VPC and put the name tag as VPC B right here. The CIDR, the IPv4 CIDR block for our VPC B is going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And again, we are going to enable IPv6 and the IPv6 CIDR block is going to be provided and assigned by Amazon. We will keep the tenancy as default and click on yes, create. So as you see, our VPC B has been provisioned and these are the details. So again, let us go ahead and copy the VPC ID. And I'm just going to keep some couple of things handy right here. And I'm going to copy my IPv4 and my IPv6 IDs as well. Okay. So this is my IPv6 uh, CIDR block and my IPv4 CIDR block right here. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do after we have created both of these uh, VPCs is go ahead and review the route tables. So as you see, we should have two route tables over here. This is our route table for our VPC A. So let's go ahead and rename this as VPC ART. And if we go ahead and review the routes of this route table, as we saw earlier, we were expecting two local routes, one for IPv4 and the other one for IPv6. Similarly, this is the route table for our VPCB. So let's go ahead and rename this IP VPCB RT. And again, if we go ahead and review the routes for these, this particular route table, you can see that there is there are two routes. First is the route for our IPv4 and the other one is the route for our IPv6. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is create a peering connection between both the VPCs. Okay, so if we have to review this diagram before we move further ahead and let me quickly grab my pencil. So we have created VPC A and we've assigned it a IPv4 CIDR block and Amazon has assigned it IPv6 CIDR block. As you see, we have it, we have our information right here. Okay. And we have created VPC B and we've assigned it IPv4 CIDR block and Amazon has gone ahead and assigned it an IPv6 CIDR block. Now the next thing that we need to do is to create a peering connection between them and name the connection as PCX AB. And after we have created this peering connection, the next thing that we will do is uh, update our route tables for the routes going back to our peering connection, as you see right here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my drawings and then switch back. So let's go ahead and create a peering connection. So I'm going to Click on peering connections right there and then click on create peering connection and I'm going to give this a name as we mentioned earlier PCX hyphen AB. The requester of this connection is going to be VPC A. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to assign VPC A as a requester. Okay. And as you see, both our IPv4 CIDR block and our IPv6 CIDR block are associated. The next thing it is asking us is the VPC that we want to peer to is that VPC part of the same account. In this case, that is true. And whether that VPC is part of the same region. And in this case, that is true as well. So let's go ahead and now select the acceptor VPC, which is going to be a VPC B and there it is right there. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And again, if you scroll further down, you will see that both IPv4 and IPv6 CIDR blocks are associated. So let's go ahead and create a peering connection. So let's click on create peering connection. 
and click on OK. So as you see, all the details are right here and our querying connection request was successful. So let's click on OK. And if we come back here, you will see that our peering connection request is currently in an pending acceptance status. And we have, uh, we can see our uh, IPv4 slider block, although we cannot see our IPv6 over here. And at this point of time, we cannot see the acceptor VPC slider block. But the moment we accept this peering connection request, we will be able to see our acceptor VPC cider block. So let's go ahead and accept this peering connection request. So click on actions and then click on accept request. And then click on yes, accept and click on close. So as you see, our connection status is now active and you can see the acceptor VPC cider block right there. Okay, so a peering connection PCXAB has been established. So we have basically gone ahead and completed this peering connection between both these VPCs. So the next thing as we discussed is to go ahead and update our route tables for both VPC A and VPC B for both IPv4 as you see right here and IPv6. So we will go ahead and do that as our next step. So let me switch back. Okay, so there it is and let's click on route tables. So as you see, this is our VPC A route table and that will be the first route table that we will modify. So we can see both the local routes right there. So let's click on edit. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add routes going back to our peering connection VPC B. And for that first we will add route for our IPv4. And the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add route for our IPv6. So let's copy the IPv4 address from our notepad. So it's going to be IPv4 address of VPC B. Let's copy that and paste here. And there you go. You do see the peering connection coming up. So select this peering connection PCXAB. So this is our IPv4 route. We're going to add another route for our IPv6. So click on add another route. And let's go ahead and copy our IPv6. and paste it right here and again let us select our peering connection that we had created between our VPC A and VPC B so it's right there PCXAB and then click on save so as you see our uh, route creations and updating our route table was successful all our uh, routes and a, and a communication between the destination and target are all in active status at this point of time. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and update our route uh, table for our VPC B. So let's go ahead and select our VPC B route table right here. Then click on routes. So as you see, we have our two local routes for both IPv4 and IPv6. So let us go ahead and add uh, our routes going back to appearing connection uh, to VPC A. So let's click on edit and click on add another route. And there we need to basically add IPv4 address, cider block address of our VPC A. So let's go ahead and copy that. So it's right here. Copy it here and then we are going to go ahead and select the peering connection between our uh, VPC A and VPC B, which is PCXAB. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add another route for our IPv6. So let's go ahead and copy the IPv6 cider block address for our VPC A and paste it right here. 
and again we will select the pairing connection between a VPC A and VPC B which is PCX AB and finally go ahead and click on save so as you see our routes are active between uh, for both our uh, IPv4 and IPv6 especially between VPC A and VPC B so if you see we have successfully basically created a peering connection between our VPC A and VPC B for both IPv4 and IPv6. So I hope uh, this video was, uh, was useful and it helped you to basically clear any doubts or confusions and lay a good foundation around the concepts of VPC peering. So VPC peering is not very difficult. It's pretty simple and straightforward if you understand the concept and what you can do or cannot do. Uh, I would certainly recommend that you try to first uh, perform VPC peering using IPv4 and then eventually also perform VPC peering using IPv6. So that's it from me, guys. Um, please provide your comments and feedback and do let me know, um, you know, where I can improve and if there are any suggestions or questions for me. Also, if you would like me to create videos on any specific topic, then let me know and just post it in the comments. Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial on VPC peering. Today we will discuss how we can peer one VPC with multiple VPCs. Before we go into the demo, we need to make a note of a couple of things. First is that AWS limits 5 VPCs per region. Now this is a soft limit and if you would like to increase the number of VPCs per region, you can always call AWS and get the limit increased. The other thing is, for this demo, we will create a total of seven VPCs in three different regions in the same AWS account. If you want, you can create these seven VPCs in uh, different regions, in different AWS accounts. It's totally up to you. You can mix and match it as you like. Okay, so before we go ahead, let us review the architectural diagram of how this VPC peering would look like. As you see, in the center, we have VPC A right here. Let me grab my spotlight so that I can showcase that to you. So this is VPC A right here. And as you see, we will create VPC A in North Virginia with the CIDR block of 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Along with VPC A, we have VPC B, C, and D that we will create in region Ohio with their respective CIDR blocks. Also, we will create VPCs E, F, and G in region North Virginia with their respective CIDR blocks. Now on the right, we have our route table. And this is the route table, which will be the final route table after we have created our peering connections between VPC A and the rest of the other VPCs. So as you see in, in the diagram on the left, we have VPC A and it has been peered to VPC B right here. And the peering connection is called as PCX AB. Similarly, we have VPC A and we have VPC C and the peering connection is called as PCX AC. And accordingly, we will go about creating peering connections with each of the VPCs. Now in all of these peering connections, the requester is VPC A. So hence you see over here, that in the route table for VPC A, we have all the peering connections mentioned right here between VPC A and the other VPCs. For the, each of the individual VPCs, you will see that they have the local route along with the route going back to VPC A, which is essentially the peering connection between VPC B in this case and VPC A. So similarly, the rest of the other VPCs have a peering connection and a route going back to VPC A, as you see right here. Okay, if you would like to have no additional details about uh, 
one to many VPCs, VPC peering. This is the AWS URL, which I've put right here at the bottom. Feel free to visit this URL and uh, you can get further more information about how to go about peering one to many VPCs for full access. Okay, so let's get into our demo. So I'm gonna clear all my drawings and switch to my AWS account. So this is my AWS account right here, as you see. And basically to speed up, speed up the demo, I have created uh, the VPCs already. So as you see, this is region North Virginia and I have my VPC A created right here. And the VPC ID is mentioned there and the CIDR block is mentioned right below it. So this is our VPC A in North Virginia as per our diagram that is right here as you see in the right in the center. Okay, now let's switch our region to Ohio. So in Ohio, I have created VPC B, C and D and they have their individual CIDR blocks as you can see. And if I switch back, we have B, C, and D in this particular diagram in our region, Ohio, as you see, it's right here. Similarly, we have E, F, and G in Northern California. So let's change our region to Northern California, and we should be able to see those three VPCs right there. So these are our three VPCs in Northern California with their respective CIDR blocks. Okay, so since we have created our VPCs already, the next thing that we will do is, we will try and create a peering connection between VPC A and VPC B. So let me switch back to Northern Virginia. In this situation, I mean, especially for this particular scenario, our VPC A is our requester VPC, and it will be the one that will be initiating the peering connection to VPC B. So in order to create a peering connection between two VPCs, we need to basically go scroll further down and there is peering connections right there. So let's click on peering connections and click on create peering connection. And I'm going to give this a name as PCXAB as per our diagram, as you see, it's right here between VPC A and VPC B, the peering connection is called as PCXAB. Okay, so let me switch back. And then the request a VPC in this case is going to be VPC A. Scroll further down. If you remember, I mentioned uh, earlier in my note that all our VPCs are in the same account, but in different regions. So we will select the account as my account because they are in one in the same account. But my VPC B is in a different region. In this case, it is Ohio. So let's select another region. And then as you see, we see Ohio right there. Now we need to put the VPC, VPC ID over here. So I'll have to basically copy the VPC ID. So let me show you how that's done. So I'm going to go back to, uh, I've opened another tab and I will go back to my VPC B in region Ohio. So let's select the region over here as Ohio. Okay, it's taking a little while. There you go, that's Ohio. And you can click on your VPCs. And then we should be able to see the VPCs right there. So this is our VPC B, and this is the VPC ID. So we're gonna copy this ID from here and go back to appearing connection and paste it right there. Ensure that you remove all the spaces and then click on peer, create peering connection. So as you see, a peering connection between a VPC A and VPC B has been created. Now these are the details of the request a VPC, which in this case is VPC A, that is on the left. And on the right, you see the VPC details of the acceptor VPC, in this case, the VPC B. But as you see, you cannot see acceptor VPC CIDR block. 
Now this will be vis visible once our acceptor VPC accepts a peering connection. So let's click on OK over here. And if we go back uh, and click on appearing connections, you will see that it is currently in a pending acceptance status. Now, if I switch my region back to Ohio, where our VPC B is, and if we go and click on peering connections, we should be able to see a pending acceptance request. So as you see, this is the request that uh, VPC B has received from VPC A for creating a peering connection. And what we will do is we will first go ahead and name this. So I'm going to call this VPC, uh, PCX AB. Okay. And then what we will do is we will go ahead and accept this request. So click on actions and then accept request. And then click on yes request. And click on close. So as you see, now this uh, peering connection is in active status. And now you can see the acceptor VPC slider block right here. Okay. If we go back to our uh, VPC A in Northern Virginia, you will see that the connection status is active now and you are able to see the acceptor VPC slider block. So as you see, the status is active and this is the acceptor VPC's slider block. Now, just like we created um, this peering connection between VPC A and VPC B, similarly, we will be creating uh, peering connections between the rest of the other VPCs, that is C, D, E, F, and G. The steps are similar. Uh, there is no difference at all. For VPCs E, F, and G, just ensure that you change the region to Northern Virginia to accept the uh, the peering request and VPC C and D are in the same region as VPC B that is Ohio. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and basically have these peering connections created. I'll pause the video for a little bit and then once these peering connections are uh, created, I'll resume recording. So as you see, I have basically gone ahead and created peering connections between VPC A and the rest of the other VPCs. And as you see, most all our uh, connections are in active status right now. So let us switch back to our uh, diagram over here and we can discuss further. Let me grab my pencil. So what I have done is we basically first created VPC A and all the other VPCs. Then I created a pairing connection between VPC A and VPC B, which is PCX AB. And then I paused the recording and I basically created rest of these other pairing connections. So all of these pairing connections are now available and they are active. So as you can see right here, um, all of these pairing connections are right here as you see. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and now modify the route table for our VPC A and the corresponding VPCs. Now, since VPC A was the requester VPC, you see that all these corresponding routes going to the rest of the other VPCs are present in its route table. So let us first go ahead and modify the route table for VPC A and add uh, all of these peering connections. Now, as you see, what we will need is the peering connection uh, interface uh, name, as you see, is right here, and the corresponding uh, VPC's IP address. So I have basically made a note over here of all the VPC's uh, IDs and their corresponding IP addresses, and we will basically be using this to populate the route table. So let us quickly switch to our AWS account and go to uh, Northern Virginia. We are in Northern Virginia right now, as you see on the top. Let's click on route tables. And this is my VPC A route table, the one that I'm selected right now. And as you see, if I click on routes, there's only one single route, which is the local route. So let's click on edit. And here we will add routes going back to the rest of the other VPCs. So first we will add a route for VPC B. 
Our CIDR block for VPCB is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So let's copy this right here. And then what we need to select is the pairing connection between VPCA and VPCB. So as you see, it's right over here at the bottom, PCXAB. So select that. Again, click on another route. And then we will copy the IP address of VPCC. So this is the IP address of VPCC. So let's copy that here. And then select the route or the peering connection going back to VPCC, which is PCXAC, the one that is highlighted right now. So let's select that. Click on add another route and then click on the IP address for VPCD, which is 10.2.0.0. So let's copy that here and then click on the peering connection going back to VPCD. And similarly, we will add routes for VPC E, F and G. So this is our CIDR block for VPC E. So let's copy that and then select the peering connection. And then again, copy the CIDR block of VPCF and paste it right here and its corresponding pairing connection. Scroll further down and the final one, which is VPCG in this case, copy the CIDR block and add it right there. And then select PCXAG. So as you see, we have basically added the CIDR blocks of all the VPCs and the corresponding uh, peering connection between VPCA and that corresponding VPC. So let's go ahead and click on save. And as you see, our route table was successfully modified. Now, if you compare this route table with the route table that is here, you see that there's a local route and then we have routes going to all the different VPCs right from B to G. Similarly, over here, we have the local route, which is the one right over here at the top. And we have routes going to the different VPCs, that is the peering connections between VPCs A, B, C, D, E, F, and G right here. So we've successfully modified the route table of our VPC A. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to modify the route table of our VPC B and the corresponding VPCs. So let us go ahead and first modify the route table for VPC B. So this is my route table for VPC B. And as you see, if I click on routes over here, there's only uh, the local route as expected. So we need to edit this and we need to add another route going back to VPC A. So the CIDR block for VPC A is 172.16.0.0. So let's copy this right here. And we will select the peering connection, as you see, going back to VPC A. So select this and click on save. Similarly, we will have to modify the route table for VPC C. So let's click on edit. Click on add another route and copy the CIDR block for VPC A and select the peering connection going back to VPC A, which is PCX AC. So this is the peering connection between VPC A and C. So select that and click on save. Next, we need to modify the route table for VPC D. So click on edit, add another route, copy the IP address of VPC, uh, CIDR block, sorry, for VPC A and select the peering connection and click on save. Finally, we still have to modify the route tables for the remaining three VPCs, VPC E, F, and G. So let's start, get uh, started with first VPC E. So as you see, this is uh, our VPC E so route table right there. If you click on routes, you will see the local route as expected. And what we need to do is we need to edit this route table, add another route and copy the CIDR block for VPC A and the peering connection going back to uh, VPC E and click on save. Next, we will modify the route table for VPC F. So click on edit, again, add route, add the IP address and select the peering connection and click on save. 
and last is our VPCG. So again, the same steps. Copy the cider block, add the peer, select the peering connection and click on save. So as you see, we have modified all our uh, route tables for all our VPCs right from VPC A all the way to G. So essentially our route tables currently look very similar to the route table right here with VPC A having the local and the rest of the other peering connections and the individual VPCs having the, their local route and the peering connection going back to VPC A. So similarly, we can actually, we can achieve this kind of uh, one to many peer, VPC peering um, relationship uh, between as many VPCs as, as many you want. Now, in this case, we basically had VPC A being peered to the rest of the other VPCs. But if we want, let me grab my pencil, uh, real quick over here. If we really want to make it, uh, you know, further more complicated, we can actually have peering connections between these individual uh, VPCs as well. So just like how we have a peering connection between VPC A and VPC B and VPC A and VPC C, we can also at the same time have a peering connection between VPC C and, VP and VPC B. So probably something like this and similarly something going between VPC C and VPC D. So you could actually go ahead and create a mesh over here between these individual VPCs. Now not just between VPC B and C, you could potentially also have a peering connection going between VPC B and D, uh, E, F and G is already there. So the permutation combinations or the type of pattern that you would like to create is totally up to you. You can create um, as many VPC connections as many you want between these individual VPCs. So it's up to you what kind of uh, schema you would like to put forward and accordingly have your VPC connections created. Okay guys, so that's it from me for today. Um, thank you and do let me know uh, your feedback about this video and the rest of the other videos as well and if you would like me to create a video on any specific topic um, then do let me know uh, post in my in the comments down below and I can certainly have that video created and posted for you so thank you so much and have a nice day bye-bye